Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 7 of this third series of painting a Song of Ice and Fire tabletop game miniatures. In this series we've been painting Ramsey Bolton, the great John Umber, and Gregor Clegane, the mountain that rides. So far we've put down a whole lot of the basic colors, we've blocked in our miniatures, and we can already see they're coming together into what we want them to look like. Today we're going to be starting on some really important steps, which is to say the base and the face. Now the fact that they rhyme is just a happy coincidence, but both of these are quite important to the ending aesthetic of our miniatures. Uh, if you leave unfinished bases like I used to because I didn't really care and I thought, wow, they're never going to match with the ground anyway, well, the miniature just doesn't look finished. Um, and even if your base doesn't blend in with the ground cover that they're on at any particular point in time, uh, the, just having your base decorated will help the miniature pop way more. Before we get on to actual bases and the faces themselves, which I'll talk to their importance uh, as well, um, we're just going to be doing the heraldry on Gregor Clegane's clothing. Now that our yellow is dried and our metals have dried and everything, I've just taken some straight up black ink and I'm going to be painting in all of the dogs. I mentioned this a little bit last episode, but uh, I'm going to repeat it here for any of you who aren't following episode by episode or anyone who's new to the channel. Painting the heraldry on these A Song of Ice and Fire Tabletop game miniatures is actually almost a pleasure because of the sculpted detail that they give you. Um, if you tried to paint uh, medieval miniatures at any point in time in the past uh, and you've gotten uh, miniatures with this wide, you know, tabard or their shield or their, uh, God forbid, their horses um, comparison that are just big, wide, empty spaces to paint uh, heraldry onto, you'll probably have run into the fact that freehand painting small detailed patterns like you would have on heraldry can be a huge pain. Um, it's absolutely feasible and man, there are some people who do it well, but uh, just having these sculpted details on here that you can follow along with is, uh, well, it's a bit of a relief, especially when you're trying to make a lot of miniatures table ready as quickly as possible and you're sort of speed painting them along like we're doing here. So just basically paint within the lines, do what we've been doing with coloring books for the longest time. And uh, in this case, I would say I was a little cautious with painting these. I didn't want uh, the ink to run over and ruin the yellow, which is uh, very reasonable. The yellow is quite hard to get smooth, as we saw earlier. But uh, it could have done with a little more coverage around the edges of these dogs. Uh, because they're raised a little bit, there's sort of a, a 3D depth to them. And uh, going around the edges of that would have done a lot to make the uh, heraldry look a little more complete. Um, that being said, it's not super noticeable, and that's a super easy fix for you to do at home. And in fact, this is a little fix I did after I finished painting these miniatures all together. Um, Painting on the heraldry here, you can see there I'm trying to get the 3D edges just a little bit, running my paintbrush along the top. Another way you could do it um, is with like a fine liner pen or a tiny fine nibbed Sharpie. Um, Sharpies actually paint real well onto plastic, primer, or other ink, and uh, I frequently use them to touch things up. In fact, I'm not going to do it in this video because I only sort of thought of it a little more recently than this. But what I've started doing is I'm using a Pigma Micron fine liner pen that I use for drawing. Um, and it's a very, very thin one, like a 003 or a 006. Uh, and I use that to draw the pupils on my miniatures and refine their facial details nowadays. So I strongly recommend taking a look at what other art supplies you have if you are a kind of artsy person, because a whole bunch of them are probably useful for painting miniatures. Now we're starting to get into real detail-oriented stuff, so I'm going to be looking for small areas that I need to touch up. Here with little bits of uh, brown ink, I'm just making sure that the uh, pelt is filled in all the way to the edge of the metal, all the way to the edge of his tabard, that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm just starting to really touch up these miniatures. We're in the home stretch now. If you look at these guys, honestly, if you wanted to take them out and play with them, they would look like, you know, the, the people they're supposed to represent. Everything we're doing now, we're refining them. Um, so if you do want to follow along with some, none, all of these detailing steps, I do encourage you to do them because I personally, I certainly don't consider that I paint at like a championship level for these sort of speed painting guys that I'm just trying to churn out as I practice and get better with my, um, my speed, my technique, and my precision in uh, actual environment as it were. I'm not sitting down and spending whole days painting these guys or whatever. I'm, I'm doing this after work, I'm doing this on the weekend, that kind of stuff, like you probably are. Um, if you do want to follow along with these steps, I do think like stuff like uh, refining the faces, which we'll be doing later in this episode a little of, um, 
does help a lot to make your miniatures just look even one step beyond ready to play. Um, it makes them look a little more human, a little more interesting. Before we get around to doing the faces though, um, I'm just going to be grabbing a little bit of my Vallejo Cork Brown acrylic paint. And this is uh, probably one of the only acrylic paints I use aside from the metallics, really. Um, the inks fill most of my other needs very, very well. And as you can see, with a little bit of work in the shading, like in the priming, uh, they also do a lot of the work for shading and highlighting the miniatures for me. So that saves me some time from sort of the, the more traditional workflow you might see in other tutorials. Um, but here I do want to use acrylic. I'm doing small areas and also this like cork brown color. I haven't found a really, really good way to replicate it using the inks. I think some yellow, some brown, a little bit of maybe the white ink, something like that all together could make a pretty good cork brown. But as it is, this acrylic paint from the Vallejo Medieval Colors paint set uh, is actually filling my need for that particular shade quite well whenever I'm okay with laying it on somewhat thick. For little areas like this, laying it on thick doesn't really matter. Um, the definition the ink would give us would be marginal at best, so just fire that acrylic on there. If you do want to use the same acrylics and inks as I do, and uh, you live in Canada in particular, um, I do have Amazon affiliate links down in the description, as well as a list of equipment that you could refer to if you're not from Canada without using the Amazon affiliate links. Um, as an Amazon affiliate, I do earn from any qualifying purchases you make through those links, so I would really appreciate that. It's a great way to support the channel, as well as uh, getting a little something for yourself so you can follow along and get into painting on your own time. Using the cork brown uh, Vallejo paint here lets us sort of touch in these areas uh, in uh, slightly different brown. And uh, <laughs> another reason I use it, to be honest, is that uh, I've, I've mentioned this in several episodes, so for those of you who uh, watch these back to back or have been watching the whole series i apologize for repeating myself but it does niggle at me fantasy miniatures are generally very heavily brown uh there's a lot of leather bits and a lot of whatever and you know the horn on this guy's belt even is still going to be a sort of ivory color at best a little white-ish or or this sort of more aged cork brown that i'm going for so you're going to run into a lot of brown so having a variety and browns that you're able to mix or browns that you're able to um paint onto stuff is definitely a good move just to give you some opportunity to break up the shapes and highlight stuff. What I've done here is I've mixed that uh, cork brown now with a little bit of white ink and I'm pale, uh, I've made it more pale and I'm working from the dark areas to the pale areas trying to leave some dark around the edges. This is just going to emulate a little bit of the shading on the uh, horn without going crazy on it or anything. Now that I'm happy with the claws of the bear pelt and also with the horn in his belt, I'm going to move on and take advantage of the fact that I've got some cork brown down on the uh, palette to just touch up the bases here. Um, I use the cork brown also as the base for my bases, if that makes sense. So as the, the sort of lowest level paint I put on, because it's got a sort of sandy look to it. And what we're going to be doing later, and you'll see this in a future episode, is we're going to fire some brown ink over top of it just to wash it down. That brown ink will also pull out a little bit of the texture that's on the bases already. Because um, if you do have these A Song of Ice and Fire miniatures, you'll see they've got a sort of cracked earth texture just baked into the base. So with this cork brown, uh, then a wash of the, the brown ink, we're going to get a sort of muddy, moist earth looking thing almost. Um, with the texture sort of having been picked out by the ink. For now though, I'm just really, really roughly using a flat paintbrush to just apply that cork brown all over the base, all around. I'm trying not to get it on the miniature's feet themselves, but if you do end up getting it on the miniature, uh, we can just cover that up with the brown ink later when we're washing the base and make it look like eh, they're actually stepping in mud, you know? Stuff got dirty. If you don't want to waste paint by putting it on your palette and potentially it drying there, um, you can, especially for big miniatures like uh, Gregor Clegane here, just fire it straight from the bottle onto the base. Uh, I prefer to do this wherever possible, just to avoid yeah, over put, uh, putting too much of the um, cork brown onto my palette, and then you'll find it sort of ends up the bottom layer of it is just a waste because it dries before you can even get to it and you end up overusing your paints if you're just putting them on the palette all the time with no particular need to. So if you can't apply directly to the base, do it. Um, if you can't, well, the, that's what the palette's there for. That and, you know, mixing colors. 
Another thing about these miniatures from the Song of Ice and Fire tabletop games, especially for the heroes, they often have little rocks or something under them, like that little rock under the tabard for Gregor Clegane's horse here. Um, and uh, those little details obviously are for helping the posing and stuff like that, but you can use them a little bit here once we've done particularly this azimuthal shading that ends up giving you sort of a dark light gradient, almost like you dry brushed it. Um, you can just sort of leave those not covered with your cork brown and not later inked, and they'll just look like stones on the ground, so they sort of break up the ground's color scheme a little bit and make it look detailed as well. I do recommend doing that if you can on uh, miniatures where it actually looks good. Um, it definitely can add a little bit of flair to your hero miniatures bases. Now once I have laid that on you know, reasonably thickly onto the bases of uh, my miniatures here. I'm going to be moving on to mixing together a color for the faces. Now this is the same mixture that I've used in every series so far because I'm still making these generic Caucasian dudes from the Game of Thrones universe. And that mixture is some white, some brown, some uh, magenta ink, and some yellow. Um, often I'll use white acrylic to slightly thicken it up and give me a little more control as I apply the colors. Uh, you can also use the white ink though, just you know, be aware, don't use a soaked brush here. Make sure you twist the brush out and uh, wring it out a little bit to get rid of some of the extra moisture. That way it doesn't flow throughout the face. What we're going to be doing here is a little precise. It's probably the most precise work you're going to be doing with these guys, except for, I don't know, maybe putting some, uh, like, silver onto belt buckles or something. But, uh, what this is going to do is it's just going to add a lot of vibrancy and richness to the faces. Um, you can already see that the brown wash over the uh, gray primer has given the faces definition. And they look like faces, they're shaded in the right places and stuff. But they're a little flat. Um, by adding in a little bit of this pink, this yellow, and lightening up the brown ink, we're going to get ourselves a much more lively color. We're also going to uh, use that just to define the shapes of the face a little further. The face is naturally a focal point, both when you're looking at other people and when you're looking at their miniatures. Um, so putting a little more detail into the face sort of behooves you only in so far as um, that might be the thing people notice the most, unless there's a really obvious other focal point on the miniature, like, you know, for example, really complicated um, heraldry or ornamentation on something or whatever that would be another thing that maybe you want to focus on but like on human characters little human characters that are sort of ordinary like this um if they got a nice face people are going to notice that they're going to look in and they're going to go wow you know that that looks like a face um sounds kind of goofy to say but yeah so after mixing together my colors there using the white ink i did actually decide that i would prefer to have white acrylic. Um, that extra control on the brush is uh, its really, really nice to have when you're doing this kind of stuff. And also, it makes it a little easier to mix in your white incrementally if you want to shade the face upwards. So a single application of this sort of flesh tone to your face in the, the right areas to highlight it, which I'll, I'll show in a second here, um, will already do a lot to just add color and sort of energy vibrancy to the face, as it were. Um, but if you can layer it up, two, three layers maybe, um, you'll wind up with a really believable sort of facial, um, like a gradient on the face, I guess. It'll, it'll layer up into a brighter, warmer color at the very brightest, warmest points. Um, if you're looking to do way more detail on your miniatures, you could do this same, like do two or three steps of slowly lightening a, an area up. You could do the same thing on uh, pretty much everywhere on the miniature, but I don't really bother. Like I said, I, I think the faces are a focal point and I go with those first and foremost. So mix up this sort of like, right now it's a little dark, it's lighter than the brown that's already on there, it's a little pinker, it's a little yellower, right? Cause pink like the flesh and yellow like sunlight uh, should make it look natural. And then you wanna focus on doing this T area of the brow and the bridge of the nose, a little dots on the cheeks and a little dot on the chin. If you're feeling really good about your painting ability, then you can try and sort of extend that a little more around the raised areas of the face. But that sort of like T, two dots, and then one chin dot shape really says face um, at a distance, like a tabletop distance that speaks to it looking like a face and really makes it, pulls it out from the figure. 
for this batch of miniatures, it's actually, uh, we're a little fortunate, I guess, depending on how you look at it, that uh, we've just got a couple that we have to paint faces on, so it's not going to be a huge amount of work, like if you're painting up a whole unit of random infantry or something. But um, as you can see, I'm mixing in a little bit of white acrylic here, again, thickening the paint even more, which is good. It's going to make it a little more controllable as we get into smaller areas that we're highlighting up. Um, normally, if you're trying to lighten something, I'd also mix in a little bit of red or yellow to add in that warmth of sunlight. But because this is skin tone that already has pink built in, um, I'm not going to worry about that too much here. Now, I just wanted to make sure that all of my colors were mixing, so I put in a single drop of Flow Improver, and you can see now I'm struggling with how thin it is a little bit. Uh, I'm putting in more acrylic, and I'm trying to mix it together, and I just want to have a really, really fine amount of it on the brush. I twist and I wring out the brush to make sure it's not too runny. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an even narrower area in all of the same spots that we just hit, um, but just closer to their center, closer to their highest area. Um, <laughs> this takes a little bit of accuracy, and obviously you don't want to go knocking everything down while you do it if you can avoid it. But yeah, always try and work from the outside in when you're doing this. So right now, the brown ink that we put on originally onto the faces should be sort of framing that area of the first flesh tone you put on, which will then be framing the second flesh tone, which would then in turn frame the third flesh tone, working towards the highest points. What I just did there was I let my uh, flesh tone sort of run into the mustache and the sort of creases, the nasolabial creases, that's that uh, triangular area between your upper lip and the bottom of your nose. And so I just wanted to make sure I wiped that away a little bit so that that um, facial structure, the nasolabial structure, was preserved. Here on Ramsey, you could really see it. I'm just putting a thin area of this lighter flesh tone in, all the exact same places we hit the first time, just smaller, <laughs> making sure that uh, this gradient is preserved from outside to inside or outside to the highest area. Here, I'm also expressly trying not to join the highlight on the cheeks to the highlight on the chin, just to leave a bit of a brown area around it, sort of shading it in and making the chin look like it's jutting out a little more, really to define that part of the face, because uh, Ramsey's miniature is portrayed with this sort of evil grin and his chin sticking out. He's not, um, I don't know, it's one of the defining chunks of the face, I'm trying to preserve it. I'm going to put in a whole bunch more white acrylic here to lighten up my color again, and I also put in more Flow Improver. Personally, if I, if I were doing it again now, I probably wouldn't do that. I'm a little more comfortable with what my tools can do, and uh, I would say I'd rather work with a thicker paint for doing faces. Here again, we're putting on a third layer of highlight, just smaller area yet again, and that's where not having a thin, you know, this thin paint anyway, um, would maybe help you just in controlling it as you apply it. I was pretty fortunate it went on fairly well because I wrung out my brush before going up to the miniature, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, consider what you're using before you use it. At that point, I was pretty uh, in love with the flow improver and the effect it had. Uh, and for a lot of areas, definitely worth it. Here, maybe not so much. Now be very careful as you go on to this with uh, Great John as well. He's got a smaller facial area to highlight because of his hair, mustache, or beard. Um, so just be very, very careful as you put it on so you don't obscure all the other work you put on earlier making that gradient happen. As you do that, um, we're going to end off for this episode. We'll be continuing with both bases and faces in the next episode. I just want to thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You learned something. Anything that uh, you know you gained from this, that's awesome, and I'm happy that you were able to take something away from it. If you have any comments about the video, you got any questions, throw them down in the comment section. I'd love to see them. Um, I'd love to answer any questions you have. If you do have suggestions for uh, games or something you'd like to see on the channel, let me know. I, uh, I'm always interested to learn about new games. Um, there is going to be some more varied content coming up in the future as well as we get into some battle reports and some rules analyses of some tabletop games I like. Um, follow me on Facebook and Instagram if you are interested. Uh, I normally post projects that I'm in the middle of there, so you'll find out you know, a month or two before something hits the YouTube channel what I've been working on, what it looks like, um, and you get a chance to sort of comment on it, interact with me a little early there. A big thank you to all of you who keep coming back and watching my videos time after time, or just popping in again, checking in on how the channel is doing. Thank you so much, and for those of you who are new, watching this stuff for the first time, I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I'll see you again. If you got anything that you'd like to see, throw it down in the comments. Until next time, go play some games.